Good morning. This is our last day on the Natchez Trace Parkway. I think we've got about 60 miles to cover. And we're going to start by uh, a visit at mile marker 385. And we're going to look into one of the greatest mysteries we've ever encountered on our RV lifestyle travels. So what do you think that's all about? When it comes to the personal heroes we have for our RV lifestyle, at the top of the list is Meriwether Lewis with his partner William Clark. The Lewis and Clark expedition in the early 1800s was the equivalent of the moon landing is for our culture today. He died here on the Natchez Trace and his death is a mystery. This monument commemorates the life of Meriwether Lewis, who died at the age of 35 in 1809. After the Lewis and Clark expedition, President Thomas Jefferson appointed Lewis the governor of the Louisiana Territory. And in October 1809, Lewis was on his way to Washington, D.C., traveling this part of the trace. He was delivering some documents, some letters that related to the expedition to President Jefferson. No one's quite sure what was exactly in those letters, but Lewis was determined, all of his friends said, to get to Washington. He didn't. When Lewis reached this point on the Natchez Trace, he saw an inn and he decided to spend the night. This is a replica of what the inn was like. What many people don't know is that Meriwether Lewis fought bouts of depression his entire life. The night he died here in this inn, the innkeeper said he was acting strange, peculiar. He would have tied up his horse in the back. He went in, went to his room, had dinner, and then late at night the innkeeper heard shots. He was shot twice, once in the chest and once in the head. And they ruled it at the time a suicide. Later, an inquest ruled that it was really a homicide. So this whole controversy, how you could commit suicide with two gunshots, one in the chest and one in the head, um, that's, that's been a stumper for a lot of people. But it's a mystery and you can find out more about it here on the Natchez Trace at mile marker 385. Now the sad thing is, is because of COVID right now, they've closed this, uh, this building, but it's a little exhibit in there. Do you remember when we were in here before? Yeah. yeah we visited this place uh, several years ago. In fact, it got us all excited about Lewis and Clark. We later uh, followed their expedition to the West. Um, I'll put a, a link to an article that more fully goes into all the details of his mysterious death, but a pretty big mystery on the Natchez Trace. Ready to hit the road again? I am. All right. At almost 392, there is a delightful trail and waterfall worth the stop. There's something about being in the woods around water and nature that just makes the cares of the day disappear. You can't go wrong stopping at any of these places along the Natchez Trace. 
You are surrounded with all this beauty of nature, but when you slow down, take your time, and look down and see the beauty of these delicate, colorful wildflowers, you really appreciate them. This is beautiful. One of the products that was sure to have moved down the Natchez Trace, all the way down there to Natchez, was tobacco grown up here in Tennessee. At mile marker 401.4, there is an old tobacco farm and uh, a walk that'll take you to show you how that product was grown. It was an instrumental part of the commerce of this part of the country and it played a role in moving down the Natchez Trace. This is a tobacco drying barn and they have strips of wood where they would put the leaves of tobacco over to dry. They had to dry for four to six weeks and you could still smell the aroma of tobacco. If you stop at the tobacco barn, there's a two mile dirt road that you can drive on the actual trace. We did it in our C. I would feel comfortable right, doing this drive in a, in a B or a C, but not anything any larger. that this two mile stretch is here is you can say that you drove the trace in your motorhome and uh, also so that you have to slow down and just enjoy the beauty of the original trace and it's it's pretty interesting how low some of the parts are how it, it's grooved out over over time all the travelers that took it that you're in this little valley it is let your imagination go crazy and think about what it was like to walk this and ride a horse on this and the danger and excitement of taking this trace. Well, I tasted a little bit of the danger because when I was outside shooting our RV driving down this little strip of uh, trail, I came back with a tick. Uh, there are a lot of ticks out here, so check yourself and check your pets every time you get back in your RV. The road is paved for a little bit. All right, okay. we are off that little path and we are now back on the main Natchez Trace Parkway. At stop 404 is Jackson's Falls, and it is worth it. If you don't have any mobility issues, it is worth the steep climb. It is beautiful. It's a very steep trail. It'll be, it's a little hard going down, but I know with Bo, it'll be a lot easier going up. That's because he pulls us up. <laughs> I think we're going way down there. Oh, that's so pretty. This is steep. I know. I just hope Bo doesn't see a squirrel. <laughs> get out of there, you're going to get a snake. That's where the snakes right, live. Come on, Bo. <laughs> we should tell everybody about snakes. There are a lot of 
venomous snakes out here. There's a copperhead. They do have rattlesnakes. And they have water moccasins too. All of those uh, on all three states of the uh, Natchez Trace. So that's why you want to keep your dog on a leash as best you can. And uh, keep him from sticking his snout into rocks and holes and crevices. Can you imagine this after rain? Oh, look at that. It would come tearing down there, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that cave up there. Look at the ferns, the runny water, the beautiful flowers. This is so pretty. Erosion has carved out a natural bowl down here. The river ran through it and down it. This is almost a religious experience. It is so beautiful and so peaceful here. Okay, Bo, let's go up. No fair, you've got the dog with the four-wheel drive. I admit, he does make it easier. It's like an extra couple of feet. <laughs> mush, Bo, mush. But don't stop, Bo. We'll keep going. Well, we switch about halfway up. It's a lot harder without Bo. <laughs> <sighs> At mile marker 407.7 is the Gordon House that was built in 1818. The Gordon family lived here. The significance of this house is that it's one of the very few original buildings remaining on the old Natchez Trace. Uh, the family that owned it, John Gordon and his wife, uh, John was a ferryboat operator. He set up a trading post here. Most of his uh, life, though, was taken up uh, serving in the Army with Andrew Jackson. His wife ran the trading post in his absence. He died a year after uh, this house was complete, and uh, she continued to live here until 1859. Life on the frontier of the Natchez Trace. The house is closed, and you can't go inside because of its deteriorating condition, but the bricks look pretty good. Good reason to build your house out of brick. Remember the old root cellars? We'll probably be going back to those someday soon. At mile marker 426.3 is a lonely monument that you might be inclined to pass by, but it honors one other significant group of travelers who used the Natchez Trace. The soldiers from the War of 1812 who used the Natchez Trace to get down to the Gulf Coast to defend the United States from the British warships there. This monument honors all of those who died along the Trace. Following the victory at the Battle of New Orleans, most of the Americans who fought the battle returned on the Trace. Volunteer soldiers marched hundreds of miles, often in severe weather, with little food and inadequate equipment. Natchez Trace Inns served as hospitals. Soldiers who did not survive the marches are buried in unmarked graves along the Trace.
very unceremoniously, the Natchez Trace just ends. There is no 444 marker that we could see. <laughs> I saw 442. And then it just dumps into a state road. But we did it, 444 miles uh, from Natchez to Nashville. And it was great fun. I recommend it to all. Now, if you're planning this trip, and we really recommend you do this, we have some tips that will help you, I think, make your trip go a little easier. Tip one, take your time. I know we've said this before in this series, but the speed limit on the trace is 50 miles an hour. Stick to it. Stop often and enjoy. It is two lanes for all 444 miles with no passing lanes. Get a map. The National Park Service has maps and brochures on the trace with lots of helpful information. In the accompanying blog post for this video on our RVLifestyle.com travel blog, we'll put links, but the maps list all sorts of recommended spots that you can stop by mile markers, and it'll be a big help. Number three, there are RV size limits. You can't be more than 55 feet with a tow vehicle and the RV cannot be more than 14 feet high. Many pullouts along the trace will be a bit tricky for class A's and big fifth wheels that are towing a vehicle. Tip four, share the road. The trace is a very popular bicycle route. There is no shoulder on the trace and you will be sharing the 11 foot wide lanes with cyclists. Tip five, visit the surrounding communities just off the trace. Most have great visitor centers and displays, and they have much to offer. That's where you get food and fuel. There are no businesses or gas stations on the trace itself. Number six, arrive early if you plan on to camp. The three campgrounds on the trace are very nice. There are no hookups or showers, but they do have level camping sites and flush toilets and clean bathrooms. The campgrounds are totally free but they're first come, first served, and they do fill up most nights. So check them out. There's lots of other campgrounds that you can find in the surrounding communities. Tip number seven, explore the trails off the trace. There are lots of great places to hike. Wear long pants, there are ticks in the woods. We saw lots of poison ivy. Dogs are welcome, but must be on a six foot leash. There are venomous snakes as well. So keep your pets close to you. We did have to brush off some ticks. We saw no snakes. Wear good hiking shoes. We took nine days, but I would recommend 12 to 14 days. So enjoy your trip and uh, enjoy this video by showing us uh, you liked it by giving us a thumbs up on it. Don't forget to subscribe to the RV Lifestyle channel. Please do so. Uh, and when you do, click that little bell icon and then you'll be notified when new videos are online. Already, I, I want to go back to the trace. There's <laughs> to the too much traffic. Quiet, too yeah. much traffic, too much hecticness. We're Mike and Jennifer. Thank you guys so much for watching, and you get out there and enjoy the Natchez Trace. Happy trails. <laughs>